Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Tiled tutorial series. In the last part, we took a look at the basics of using Tiled. Uh, today, we're going to move on to a slightly more advanced feature called Terrains. Um, it's nothing too, too difficult. Actually, working with it inside of Tiled itself is actually quite simple. Uh, what you will find, however, is creating the terrain tile maps themselves can be a little bit infuriating. The, uh, the aspects and the pixels need to match up correctly for it to the algorithm to work things out. Um, this will all make a little bit more sense in a second. But first off, let's start off brand new map here in Tiled. Um, if I'm confusing the heck out of you, this is actually part two in a series. So uh, we covered the basics in the previous part. I'll link it in the comments below. Um, but I assume you've already got some familiarity with Tiled uh, coming into this. So uh, if you don't, I would recommend going back to that previous tutorial. Uh, so anyways, we're going to start off. Uh, I'll just create a standard map like so. And now I'm going to have to go ahead and bring in our tile set, just like normal. Uh, this time we're actually going to use a tile set that's included with um, the tiled map editor. So uh, go into program files, I believe it is. Yes, program files, tiled, and then examples. And they've got one already set up for us right here called um, TMW Desert Spacing. Now that spacing is key though, because there's actually a, a bit of spacing on this map. So click one when you import it like so. And if it lines up properly in this grid, you're good to go. Uh, again, normal tile set. We can uh, lay down whatever tiles we want. So for example, here is a basic empty tile, desert tile train. I'll uh, we'll come up here and just flood fill it in. So we got this nice desert map. Now what we want to do is look at making um, trains out of sets of tiles. And that's using this button right here. Um, and it's edit terrain information. So with your tile set loaded, just go ahead and press that. And it brings up the terrain editor. Now what you're doing is you're basically picking like sets of tiles. Um, so using these, the algorithm is going to figure out how to extrapolate when it comes into, for example, when it finds this cobblestone type, or we'll call that brick. It finds this brick type and it's butted up against the sand type. It will automatically know how to fill in the blanks. Um, and all you do is you sort of just outline the shape of what constitutes your terrain. So in this case, we're going to grab this guy right here and just click why oh sorry i gotta click plus we'll start a new one uh, so as i said we're gonna call it brick and then just come up here click and then drag the, around the border so the areas of the tile are highlighted don't worry about the exact precision that doesn't matter so it doesn't need to encompass the entire thing it just needs to know which part of the tile we're interested in and then also make sure with the left mouse button still held down that you grab the inside of that tile so we've defined this tile as being a brick. Uh, now we want to do the same thing but with this guy. And we want to grab just the outside. So the inside is, is sand. And we're not going to highlight it like we did here. We just want the outside. So grab the outside corner. And again, just go around the outside edge and match like so. So we're basically telling tile how to deal with the transition between uh, the desert tile and the brick tile by showing it an inside example tile and an outside example tile. Now what I found here is I've used tile maps in the past that were two by two and it did not work for heck when working with this train feature. I found for it to work properly you pretty much need to have a um, actually no it's working here so this set never worked this kind uh, where it's uh, the internal solid I've always had to have nine tiles to compose it. But with the inside hollow, I've gotten by with four. Uh, so it's one of those things where you're working with your existing tile set, the algorithm just does not seem happy otherwise. It's gonna be a bit of a, a playing around thing. So we just got our brick. Now what you might wanna do is go ahead and pick one of the cells over here that's gonna represent your brick image. So just right click then and say set train image. So we're just basically giving that tile as the icon for brick. Now we're gonna go ahead and create one more type of train and we shall call this stone, which is a little misleading because I guess technically brick can be stone. And we're going to do the same thing for this guy here and this guy here. We could do it again for this last guy, but we're not going to bother. So uh, just again, drag the outline here and then make sure you get the inside like so. And then now the outline there. Okay. And we are done. Now, finally, just pick a point, right click and set the image. So we do have this highlighting and that's it. That's all you need to do. So we've now defined two terrain brushes that we can use. And it's now going to know whenever it encounters a sand um, uh, edge, how to fill things in. So now what you do is instead of painting, 
like we've been doing here. We can just go over here to terrains and we pick one of our two terrains that we want to draw with. So if we want to create a brick road now, just click brick and you'll notice now it's automatically figuring out how, um, how to generate that brick. So now if I drag it around, we can just quick and rapidly and it'll figure out how to do the edging between them like so. And the same thing is true for our stone. So it gives you a quick interactive way of creating trains. So what's basically you've done here is you've told tiled how to deal with this tile against certain surfaces. Now it could be you've also got a water edge or um, grass edge, etc. in which case you would actually have to show in your tile sets, you would have to have that transition as well. And then the algorithm could actually figure out how to rapidly paint using these particular tiles. Um, so again, it's, it's no different than me coming in and basically going, you know, drawing my, uh, I can draw my tile this way and it's low, but you'll notice infilling is a pain in the butt. So what we'd have to do basically is just paint the internal like so and so on. So creating this process otherwise is a complete pain. But once you've set up your terrain brush, it literally creates a paintbrush that knows how to deal with those transitions that you've defined. So very quick, handy time saver, uh, very, very powerful feature of tiled, but you will find if it doesn't work, if you go to paint with something and it's not working for you, it's this transition isn't well enough to find, the algorithm can't figure out what to do. Now, another thing that you can do is once you've defined it, you can actually hit the control and have a little bit more precision on how your shape's done. So here we are drawing the same thing, but so no control held down, much bigger. Let me switch over to contrast it. Control held down, much more precise. And that's pretty much it. That is the uh, terrain aspect. Now it mixes and matches totally fine with your uh, normal tile sets. So if we wanna paint over like these little weird artifacts, you totally can. So it's, it's an option, but you'll notice it automatically knows to create the edges, the transitions based off the tiles you passed in. Very handy feature, hope that all made sense. Um, all right, so stay tuned. The next time we're going to talk about something called auto tiling, which is much more complex, but is used to accomplish a very similar set of functionality. See you. Bye.